Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to day number 88 of my 100 day green smoothie challenge. Um, wow, I can't believe it's been like this. I've been going strong except for a few days here and there. Um, but I'm up early and uh, I gotta get ready for a show at Crush tonight. So I'm gonna quit rambling. I'm gonna get this day started and you're gonna come along with me. We're going to get the day started with uh, my Atkins chocolate chip cookie dough bar, along with a big tall glass of water. I'm uh, going to get my protein in before I actually, uh, excuse me, get my cardio in for the day. And um, then uh, we're going to start exercising and uh, getting ready for the show tonight. So I'm here at Starbucks before I go work out today. I'm going to be going and working out the community center and keeping everything in my neighborhood local because you know what, I got usually on the day of a show I got stuff to do. So today for lunch I am having a, um, actually I'm having a bacon gouda sandwich with a Starbucks refresher in, in a tall cup. So. Trying to keep my calories low, but keeping my protein high, so that should actually be a good thing. And as you can tell, it's a beautiful cloudy day behind me, so it's not too cold, not too hot. It's actually very nice outside, and it's a perfect day to carb up and get a workout in. So here's what I'm having as a little carb up before I do my little workout. A uh, bacon gouda sandwich cooked up in face, which I prefer at a tall uh, berry hibiscus drink. And um, this should give me some energy when I do my cardio today. I have arrived at the uh, East Portland Community Center in today's cardio day, so I'm actually gonna be doing one hour on one of these treadmills behind me. And then I will see you in about that time span. Okay, I just got out of the gym. I'm sweating my ass off. I burned at least 500 calories. I got a lot of steps in. Oh, trust me, child. I got a lot, a lot of steps in. So since I decided to keep my workout local today here at the community center, I'm walking home and we're going to do some skincare on the old face before I apply some makeup for tonight's show. And I think I'm just going to chill and relax in front of the air conditioner just to cool down before I get ready. So I'll see you in a little bit. Wow. Here I am, I'm resting in my bedroom after a workout. And I'm scrolling through my Facebook feed and I just found out that the lead singer of Linkin Park just took his own life. I am floored by this, but it also shows me that life is very precious and you shouldn't waste it. Chester was only 41 years old and to me that's just way too young to be passing from this world but it, it also shows me that even though you can have millions and millions and platinum albums and and MTV music award video uh, statues lining your mantle you're not always happy and if you're depressed, it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't discriminate on skin color, gender, sexual orientation, or walk of life. Um, so it just shows me that Chester was actually just like the rest of us. And I can actually relate. So when I heard about that, it kind of reminded me of what I went through in late 2006 to mid-2009. I was married uh, to my first husband and in like early 2000, late 2005, early 2006, I started getting depressed and um, that was when a lot of shit started happening in our marriage that I won't go into. Um, but let's just say we both knew that it wasn't working. And during this time, not only was my husband at the time getting depressed, he was just let go from his first radio job, which was his first love. And so he got depressed. 
And then I was at a standstill in my own life, which got me depressed. I wanted more in life and I felt like it was stagnant and it got me very depressed. And, um, well, let's just say, uh, due to both of our depression, uh, our marriage ended and, um, it, my depression did kind of a number on me after I left my first ex-husband. In late 2006, I ended up going out with somebody who claimed to have loved me for about nine years. And eventually he turned into a sexually abusive asshole. And started trying to morph me into what he wanted me to be. And so I put up with that for nine months, long story short. Um, I got tired of him being obsessed with sex, being obsessed with uh, us having sex with other people, uh, having him being obsessed with his video camera, and videotaping people having sex along with him and I having sex. It was a pretty fucked up sexually abusive relationship. So I broke up with him in April of 2007 and then two months later, uh, here I was, I was in my late thirties and this beautiful blonde, blue eyed, 25 year old demon came into my life. And that was the beginning of two years of hell. He was very sweet and kind at first. And just like the first one, he would say like all the right things. And through my depression, of course, I was going to believe everything he was saying because, well, he was better than the last one. Well, boy, was I wrong. So not only was I sexually abused, spiritually abused, verbally abused, and physically abused, I was also financially abused by this guy. And for two years, um, it's taken me a while to repair the damage this guy has done to me uh, financially. And... Um, after he was arrested for a uh, credit card fraud in May of 2009, um, I made the decision to split up with him. Um, I'm now at a better p place in my life, but you know, during that dark time in my life, uh, I thought, you know, what did I do to deserve this? I was like, why am I here? Why am I still alive? Why aren't I dead? And during this time, I even contemplated suicide. And that actually <laughs> was a very dark time in my life. And yes, even though I am at a better stage in my life, I think back to that time, I'm, uh, back to that time that I was going through. And I'm just like I'm just amazed that I didn't kill myself and when I see stories like Chester from Lincoln Park who died at the young age of 41 I'm thinking oh my god that could have easily been me so what I'm trying to say you guys is that depression is not a joke having suicidal thoughts is not a joke telling someone that is going through depression and anxiety and PTSD that they're going to be just fine is not a joke. You need to be there for them. You need to make sure that they are okay. And unfortunately, I don't think Chester had that. And it makes me very, very sad. So I think when I'm going to get re when I get ready for the show today, I'm going to listen to a little bit of Lincoln Park. So, um, rest in peace, Chester. You will be missed. So here's my green smoothie of the day. It consists of one cup of water, half a cup of spinach, half a cup of kale, half a cup of spring mix, along with one apple, one cup of blueberries, and one cup of peaches. Well, beautiful people, I am signing off for the day because you know what? I got a lot of stuff to do. And I promise I will show you highlights from the show in tomorrow's video. But this is just like a really super busy day for me. So anyway, 
Now that we've come to the end of another video, you guys know what to do. Like the video, give it a thumbs up. Spread the love, hit the share button. Also, like what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified as to when I will be uploading a new video, please ring my bell because you know what? I like it when you ring my bell. And uh, also, uh, let's see. If you like it, hey, give it a thumbs up. Maybe I said that before. I'm not sure. Uh, today's just been a really busy day, so my mind is a little scrambled, so you'll have to forgive me. Oh, yes, we're getting to the part where you can follow me all over social media, such as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr. And you can do that all in one place at fatmiddleagedgingerpdx.weebly.com. Until tomorrow, um, be sure to stay healthy, stay beautiful, and most of all, especially in light of what happened today. Be good to each other. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.